Well, hello, FBN. Uh, happy Wednesday to you, and hope it's been a good week. Um, we are just a few weeks away from doing this in person, um, I think, and so uh, we look forward to that time. Um, until then, let's keep going in the book of Proverbs, and we're going to be in chapter 3, and what we're talking about tonight, as you have um, probably already caught on to, according to the title, uh, is the immense value of wisdom. Um, you know, we have been talking about God's wisdom this whole time, um, really since we started uh, the book, because that's what it's about. Um, but in the context of that, we haven't, I think, um, just honed in on this, uh, on this mindset of just value. There's a lot of reasons why God's wisdom is so valuable, obviously because it's His wisdom, ultimately because it points us to Him. So that's, that's pretty clear. Um, but before we get into that conversation, and as we're talking about what uh, the things that we cherish, the things that we hold dear uh, and valuable in our lives, the question that uh, we were going to kind of kick around is just simply, you know, is there anything in your life, um, Kenzie, and in my life, and, and in your lives, um, that maybe you knew it was a valuable thing, uh, but you didn't really know by experience. Uh, it wasn't something that you were um, that you were part of, and so now, um, you know, later in years or, or you know, whatever, now that you've experienced that thing, um, how has that increased your value of that particular thing that you didn't really value before, but now that you've experienced it, it's a real value to you. You understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you understand it all the more, uh, and you cling to it all the more. And so, Kenzie, are you have any... Any things like that uh, in your life that you can mm -hmm. think of? Um, I kind of think about, like, um, you know, before I was out on my own, you know, I was at my parents' house, and um, honestly, I was kind of a slob. <laughs> my room cool. was just packed. It was just always a mess. It was just all over the place, just stuff everywhere. And um, I was kind of notorious in the house for getting cups and leaving them in my room and getting another cup and another one and another one and uh -huh. just having this tower of cups in my room. Uh, I was just so messy. So when I got married and somebody else had to live in that mess with me, um, it was a problem. And um, so I just started like really appreciating the order that God appreciates. Um, mm -hmm. He does appreciate order and um, control, self-control. Um, he, he numbers our days. He numbers the hairs on our head. He, he asked Adam to categorize the animals and to name them and um, he is not a God of chaos. Uh, I was a teenager of chaos mm -hmm. as far as material, you know, things go. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, yeah, just learning how to order my home, how to minimize my possessions, how to be generous with what God's given me, how to arrange my time and mm -hmm. um, how to build routines into our family so that, you know, yeah. our kids have a peaceful experience at home. Pretty much everybody knows at any given part of the day what's expected of them. Um, it's not perfect, and my goal is not to be perfect, whatever that is. My goal is to honor God because he's given me all of these beautiful things, my children, my life, the days that I get to live, um, my mm. wonderful husband, and I want to honor those things. I want to take care of those things. I want to, um, I don't mean my couch. I don't mean my table. I don't mean my house. I mean the good things that he's given me, um, the people and um, those things, um, yeah, yeah. I think a routine has been, uh, for the record, let me go ahead and just clarify that I'm by far the, the slobbiest one uh, in our family now. So I don't know what she was like uh, necessarily <laughs> in her room or anything as a teenager, uh, but I know since our married days, I have struggled with that far more than her. Um, but routine has been a, been a big one. Mm -hmm. um, even recently, uh, the pandemic actually has helped me value this even more. Um, as I've been kind of, you know, forced in some respects to, to live in routine mm -hmm. uh, at a, in a deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, and the point is peace. Like, it's not to, like, right. for us to, like, live by this clock or something. The point is that everybody gets what they need, and we all get time to rest, and we all get time to play. Um, and I've looked mainly to the Word of, of God, and I've also looked to godly women um, mm -hmm. to kind of mentor me in that um, through media and yeah. people I know and otherwise. Yeah, I think for me, and, and similar to you, it's something that age um, and just uh, new life seasons has given me just this value of what people have, um, what people had to endure and sacrifice in order to bring me up, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I didn't value um, 
value is kind of a weird word uh, because, you know, well, I, I didn't necessarily value what my dad had to go through, um, that struggle, you know, my dad or my mom, whenever they had to discipline me as their child, you know, um, that's something that I, that I came to really appreciate and value their efforts um, now that I am a father who has to display the same efforts. Yeah. And it's hard. It's really and it hard. really stinks. Um, <laughs> So, you know, just things like that, you know, not to mention, um, you know, just being kind of called to full-time ministry. And um, there's certainly there's there's a lot of wonderful things that come with that, but there's yeah. also unique sacrifices and things that you have to give up. And, you know, as a whole, uh, my entire childhood, you know, I've pastors and youth pastors and mm -hmm. ministry people have poured into my life. And I never at, at once thought of what that might have cost them to be able to have that voice in my life. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, a lot of this wisdom, a lot of this stuff, it, it really does just come with, with experience, mm -hmm. you know, the older you get, the more you kind of see it from a different perspective. And I think that's what the thing is about the Lord is that there's so much of God's wisdom that until you just trust it and obey it mm -hmm. and then experience it, then it, you know, it comes to life for you. It's mm -hmm. like, we generally know as Christian people, God's wisdom is good and obedience is good and suffering and sacrifice and all of these things are, are good that God has a lot for us in these places, but we don't get to the point of, of experiencing those things. And so mm -hmm. we don't have that, that hyper value, mm -hmm. you know, of what then, God can do in those, sorry. in those seasons. No, yeah. it's fine. Well, I was going to say, you don't, you can't do any of that unless you walk in obedience. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't, you don't just start doing things in his way unless you obey his call. So obedience leads to yeah. untold blessing. Yeah. And I think for, you know, adults and, and young ones, um, that's kind of the call of Proverbs um, is, you know, he wants to make your path straight. Right. Uh, he wants to bring peace. And, and uh, the word that he uses here in our passage today, he wants to bring uh, pleasantries, you know, into your life. He wants this for us. Um, we can keep fighting to provide it for ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, or we can just submit it all to him, mm -hmm. trust him with it and trust that he'll be able to create something better and newer and just more fulfilling in us when we submit all of this to him and mm -hmm. trust him with it mm -hmm. instead of the other option, which is just keep going and going and going with mm -hmm. this subtle value of all of the good things without ever experiencing them, mm -hmm. um, and missing out on such a wealth of wisdom that he has mm -hmm. for us. So anyways, let me throw this question to you. Uh, thanks, Kenzie, for mm -hmm. uh, doing that with me. But uh, same question to you guys. Uh, is there anything in your life that you at once uh, maybe generically valued uh, because people told you to or, you know, it was just the, it was just the way. Um, and then when you finally experienced it, you, you realize it was like an epiphany, you know, like there's more to this than I ever realized. Mm -hmm. So why don't you guys take a few minutes to, uh, to answer that question.
Well, welcome back. Uh, let's jump into Proverbs chapter 3 now, looking at verses 13 through uh, verse 20 uh, this week. And uh, what we're going to do um, is uh, on this note of, of the immense value of wisdom, uh, what we're going to do is just look at um, six reasons why uh, God's wisdom is so valuable to us. Um, nothing groundbreaking here. Uh, a few of the things we've talked about in detail, but um, I want us to get this fuller picture um, uh, of why uh, God's wisdom is so valuable and so rich for us and um, why really um, it is um, pivotal in, in our experience on this planet, uh, but also in our experience in all the, in all the spiritual realms and how God's wisdom uh, actually, um, when followed correctly, will lead you right uh, to the feet of Jesus Christ. Um, and, and so let's do that. Um, we're going to look at six reasons. Um, uh, six reasons wisdom, uh, the wisdom of God is so valuable. And the first we find right there in verse 13, uh, my translation, the CSB says, happy is the man who find wisdoms, sorry, happy is the man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding. And we've been talking about this process of finding and acquiring, uh, right? Wisdom's calling out. Um, and we must embrace it uh, because God has such a rich um, storehouse of blessing for us in it. Uh, that's why it's there. So this idea of happiness, though, uh, if you read later, verse 17, uh, it says that her ways are pleasant and all of her paths peaceful. Um, and then verse 18, she is a tree of life to those who embrace her uh, and those who hold on to her are happy. Okay, uh, now I know it sounds almost pie in the sky here, right? This happiness and uh, pleasant and, and peaceful and happy and, and life, right? Like um, we all know that the Christian life um, contains much more grit uh, than this uh, oftentimes. Um, but the promise here isn't a pie in the sky life. The promise here, um, and it's the promise of wisdom, is that even when life goes the opposite way that you would ever imagine uh, it should, when things happen to you that you don't feel like you deserve, uh, that there is still the promise of peace. Um, there is still a wise way, a wise path to follow, um, and the promise of peace and the promise of blessing still remains, right? It's God's eternal promise to, to his people that no matter what you're going through, what your circumstances are, happiness, uh, or blessing uh, can be yours uh, when you abide by the wisdom of God, right? His wisdom literally speaks into anything and everything that you could possibly uh, endure or experience, okay? Uh, this idea of pleasant, um, right? Um, in the Greek, this kind of means delight and beauty and favor, um, right? That, uh, that you will feel God's delight upon you. Um, and that you, you will have reason uh, to delight uh, as well. Um, this, is a, this is a wonderful, a wonderful experience, right? Um, if, you've, if you've been there, if you know the Lord, um, you know um, that feeling of just kind of feeling like he's, he, he, I mean, he sees you. He has a world of seven, eight billion people, and yet he still, still sees you, and uh, you can still experience um, a wonderful delight and, and favor and beauty uh, in your relationship with him. It talks about peace, right? In uh, Philippians chapter 4, we see, uh, we read about this peace that transcends all understanding, um, right? Uh, it, it's, it's something that you just, you can't, you can't uh, formulize. Um, you can't put it uh, into an equation um, and say A plus B equals equals peace. It's simply something that transcends all understanding, and it comes straight from Him, right? It can only be found in the wisdom of God. So you go into the uh, into the peak of life that is the most trialsome and heartbreaking in all of that, and yet God still has a pass uh, a path for peace. Uh, even in those places. Listen, this is a um, very relevant uh, right now. Um, we need God's wisdom uh, in our um, in our economic, not economic, but our, in our social social climate right now. Uh, we need God's wisdom uh, to penetrate the hearts of of the believers um, to respond with grace and humility uh, and love and empathy. Um, 
we need we need this now. I'm not going to try to speak into anything uh, because I'm very limited um, in my uh, ability to, uh, in my confidence in my own words, to really address anything going on in a meaningful way. All I can say is that Christ is the answer um, and that peace is available. Uh, and as believers, we should pursue that um, with the fullness of humility and empathy. Okay. Um, so, um, that was happiness, right? We value God's wisdom because of the happiness that it brings, the blessing that is found in that, right? Um, life for your bones um, and fullness of life, even when your days are numbered, right? We've been talking about this. Second is this, it's the return that it yields. The return it yields. Look at verse 14. It says that she is more profitable than silver, uh, she being wisdom, and her revenue is better than gold, right? She is more profitable than wisdom, or sorry, more profitable than silver, and her revenue is better than gold. One of the things I've been hearing a lot lately is that, uh, is that money, uh, you can get money cheap right now, right? The, because the stock market and all that kind of stuff, money comes really cheap right now. You can, you know, zero percent interest on everything and all of these COVID-19 deals and um, uh, the interest rates on, on housing. I mean, people are refinancing their homes because of the crazy low interest rates because money is cheap right now, right? Um, that's kind of the, the idea. Um, here uh, in scripture, um, man, um, the, the return um, that wisdom offers you um, is far better than any, anything that silver or gold uh, can provide. Um, it is far more profitable for you than anything that silver or gold uh, might provide, right? So you, I kind of think about this in, uh, in, two, in two ways, um, that it will afford you more, right? To, to even pour a small amount of yourself into the wisdom of God will heap upon wonderful results, right? God's wisdom, I don't mean this negatively, I just mean it's, it's cheap, right? All you, if you invest a little, the return is great because his wisdom is so rich, right? It's so power-packed. And so his wisdom is more, is more valuable because it will afford you more. It is more profitable to you. If you invest a little, you'll get a, a big return because God's wisdom uh, uh, works that way, right? Um, and then, not only that, but it, once you have it, 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 grows, um, it grows immensely. Uh, it, it is fast growing. The revenue, uh, as, as uh, our passage says, uh, it, it is increasing, right? Um, heaps upon heaps of, of blessing um, that is compounded with more and more of, of God's wisdom, right? All we have to do, what we must do, is submit ourselves to the vein, to the vein of, 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 of the pumping of God's wisdom, right? And let it direct and guide us to be swept up in the flow um, of, this, of this wisdom, okay? And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But listen, um, we're going to look later that wisdom was part of the founding of the earth, right? So it's certainly going to be far more valuable and profitable than anything that comes from the earth such as precious metals, uh, and he goes on to talk here about um, precious jewels in verse 15. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire can equal her. There is literally nothing out there um, that can um, match what God's wisdom offers um, to us, right? Uh, I mean, think about everything out there. I mean, think about every single thing that there is Tell me how hard it is to find even one thing that literally it is by itself. There is nothing else that can come close uh, to matching the quality uh, and the beauty of that thing, right? To find something that is truly unique and unmatched is, is rare. Uh, I think we live in a culture, especially with the younger generations who, who love to claim and pursue uniqueness and, um, you know, uh, um, originality and, and all that kind of stuff. And what it is, it, what it becomes is just this massive blur um, of, of, of nothing original, right? Um, we, we value it and we cherish it so much, but it is so hard to find something that is truly unique and is not like anything else, but is far superior than that. But listen, God's wisdom. 
God's wisdom is that thing, right? And so instead of trying to become something that we can't become, instead of trying to constantly become that unique thing, why don't we just submit to the one thing that is truly unique above all other things, which is the wisdom of God, right? Um, because if you're trying to be unmatched in your own beauty, listen, there's always going to be somebody who's thinner, uh, prettier, um, stronger, more fit, uh, has the perfect body type. There's, there's always going to be something better. You can't, you can't get it. You can't, you can't get it. Um, if it's something in regards to just quality, right? It's a, um, it's a new truck or it's a new uh, toy or it's a new whatever. And, uh, you know, the promise is that it's never going to break and it comes with a lifetime warranty and all that kind of stuff. That's great. And I would say even in the market, there are some unmatched things, but listen, they're just going to be replaced by newer, better things. Um, it, it always happens, right? I remember buying a TV, um, when we were freshly married, Kinsey and I, uh, it was a 32 inch 720p TV. And the thing was, it was actually gifted to us, but it was priced at over $600, right? Because it was new technology. But you know how much you can buy a 32 inch 70, 720p TV uh, these days? Well, I mean, it's, it's, you'll be lucky to find one because now you can buy a 45 inch. 1080, if not more, for in the $200 range, because, because the quality uh, of those new technology, it just, there's always going to be something better all the time, uh, every single time. So why not trust in the one thing um, that will never, ever um, lose its premier unmatched quality, which is the wisdom of God, right? Uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, it talks about God's word, his which is his wisdom. His word endures forever. It always has been and it always will be, right? Grass uh, may wither and flowers will fall, uh, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Man, there's nothing else in all the creation that gives you that kind of guarantee. Okay, uh, moving on uh, to number four. Uh, four and five are kind of connected. Um, so I'll give you the sentence and then we'll break it down, right? So the first is divine power. Right? So the sentence is this, define power to create and sustain what God intends. This is something that we value about wisdom. It's divine power to create and sustain what God intends. Okay, And we get this straight from uh, verse 19 that says that the Lord founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding. By his knowledge, the watery depths broke open and the clouds dripped with dew, and we see the creative and sustaining properties of, of wisdom here, right? It's part of founding the earth and establishing the heavens, right? This knowledge, um, it, it, and it helps control the waters, and it, and it feeds the, um, uh, the clouds with, with dew, right? That's just, it's just, it, it goes so deep. It's not something that comes from the earth, right? If wisdom comes from the earth or the men of the earth, then it's not God's wisdom because God's wisdom was part of creating it all, okay? And so we are tapping into something divine here. Um, this wisdom does not find its origin in any person or in any era or in any man-made created thing or in any anything else. I mean, it, it is only found in the divine power of the Almighty God, and in that there is so much value, right? Again, what else is there out there um, that, can, that offers such a guarantee, right? This wisdom is from the Lord. It is the Lord. It is one with the Lord. Um, and here's the crazy, crazy thing. It is tangibly put uh, into, into these pages, right? I mean, not to blow your mind or anything, but it blows my mind every single time. And so if your mind's blown, that's cool. But this is a tangible, a tangible, holdable, readable, engageable piece of enduring forever wisdom from God that in his provision and care he has given to us in paper form. Sure, the leather and the paper and the ink and all that kind of stuff may be man-made, Right? But the word is here for us, and it endures forever, and it is divine. And the fact that we can have such a tangible, practical, applicable 
tool at our disposal that directly connects us to our Creator is unreal. It is not anything that anybody else, any other faith, any other religion, any other book, it is not anything that, that can be found anywhere else. Right? It's, it's wild. But listen, that's the divine power that we have as a, at our disposal, the wisdom of God that is presented to us in this form, right? Now, what does that divine power contribute to? Well, it contributes to the creating and sustaining of what God intends. That's the second part. The reason we value it is because of the divine power and nature of it. And also the reason we value it is because of what that divine power and nature can do, which is to create and sustain what God intends, whether that be creating the, the entirety of the world or creating a, a softened heart that used to be broken and shattered, right? It's, it's God's ability to, ability to make things new, and it's a promise that we see littered through the Old Testament and Revelation that he's going he's gonna to make things new, but at the same time, we don't have to wait for a new world to begin to start embracing some of the newness that comes from the power of the wisdom of God in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. That's exactly what is referred to as a, as a new self, right? A newness um, where people literally, even in this life, can walk from death to life and to have a new life in Jesus Christ and how a believer for 20 plus years like myself can struggle with things and have sinful places in his life and yet still the promise of God's wisdom is that I can find newness right in those places because of God's wisdom, it is his divine power to create and to sustain what God intends. And listen, wherever you are at in your faith walk, there is um, uh, a pursuit of newness to be had. Uh, God's wisdom still has something for you. There's something new that he wants for you. This doesn't mean, um, by the way, I'm not a huge fan of the, you know, I got a new vision or a new word from the Lord. No, his word has been here forever. Right? We don't have any time for new words from the Lord that nobody else has heard. That stuff is, is just, it's a load of junk. Okay? You don't listen to that. What I want um, is his enduring forever word to bring something new in me. Right? Um, to finally rid me of whatever that thing is that I am just worn out about and tired from and burn out on and, and, and exhausted by all of those things, whatever that is. Right, whether it be the way you're looking at your job, um, is it not life giving? Maybe it's even the way that you see church. It's not a life giving experience for you. Maybe uh, it's your marital relationship and the way that you've been pursuing your husband or your wife. Maybe it's the way that you've been parenting your children, or maybe it's whatever. And you just hit wall after wall after wall, and you are exhausted and burnt out. Right? Certainly, remain faithful in the Lord. But listen, start praying. For him to create something new in your life. I can't tell you how many times uh, we hit wall after wall after wall and we struggle and we, we get confused and we don't know what to do in, in this home and in uh, my relationship with Kenzie. And then all of a sudden he, he uses this to bring a fresh perspective. It's a perspective that's been here all along, but he uses it to speak something new into us um, that gives us new life, new breath. Um, listen, um, this is the promise of wisdom, and this is why it is such a valuable, such a valuable piece um, of God's wisdom that He's just He's just given it to us. It's here, okay. And listen, um, this wisdom became a person, and so this is the last reason why why wisdom is so valuable, and perhaps the most important. It comes from First Corinthians uh, chapter uh, chapter one. Verse 24, and it just simply says this, Yet to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Listen, this divine power and nature that can create and sustain what God intends, right, manifested itself. It became, it became, it became incarnated into a person of Jesus Christ who, by the way, always has been and always was and always will be and was part of forming the earth as well. He is also the creator working with God and wisdom and all of it functioning perfectly in perfect harmony to create what we 
what we now have, and it's this wisdom that, that he is the person of. He is the person of wisdom. And so the reason we value wisdom is because it connects us um, to the depths of the gospel and the person of Jesus Christ, right? Which, by the way, if you don't have that, then you don't know him, and you do not know um, glory. You have no chance of knowing anything new. I don't say this harshly. I say this um, pleading with you um, to come to Jesus Christ, to let wisdom, to let God's wisdom um, take your steps um, straight to the feet of Jesus Christ because it's only in him that you can find life and find peace and, and what is pleasant even in the harshest of times. It's only in the wisdom of God and in the person of Jesus Christ that you can know uh, the experience of what we're talking about. And listen, this is one of those things that people tend to value generically, right? Jesus was a good guy, right? He, uh, they, they, they don't have any issues with his teaching. Uh, he set kind of a good example, and so they value it. But listen, when you start experiencing it and believing in it, that's when it changes your life. It becomes something that you just generically value into something that is transformational from the inside out. And listen, if you're by chance listening to this and you have not um, trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then listen, you are missing out on the wisdom um, that was part of creating the entire world. And if you want to know wisdom um, as part of your, if you want to know the wisdom of, of humanity, <laughs> of spirituality, of, of all of our experiences on this earth, if you want to know purpose and meaning in life, if you want to know uh, what it means to be on mission for something bigger than yourself, if you want to know what true fulfillment and joy and peace that transcends understanding is, listen, it is all found in Jesus Christ. You need to believe in him with all of your heart. Confess him with your mouth and decide today that he's going to be your Lord and Savior. And listen, he will. He will um, meet you where you are at and you will begin to understand uh, the immense value of the wisdom of God that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Um, and your life from that point on will be marked by newness, um, and and uh, progress and sanctification and um, it's it's it is the most important thing um, on this earth and I, I encourage you uh, to put your faith and hope in it and we are always here uh, ministry at FBN and the people at FBN are always here uh, to help you along that uh, along that course so listen for everybody else I'm just curious um, what is that thing that you are you are tired of your burnout you're exhausted, you're worn out, um, you've been needing something new uh, in that area, whether it be something new in your heart, new in your perspective, new in the way that you are approaching a situation. And, uh, that situation or that experience has not been life-giving to you, certainly hasn't been any of the experience that we've just talked about here in uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Um, it's time uh, for you to bring that thing before the Lord, uh, to submit it to the Lord, and, uh, and to trust uh, His his wisdom uh, in that place to seek this diligently um, in regards to that particular thing uh, and to let him create something new uh, in you. And so why don't we end with that? Why don't you think about those, uh, that area or those areas in your life um, where you have not experienced this and you, you, want, uh, you need his newness uh, to enter in and submit that thing uh, to prayer uh, to him this evening. Outside of that, I love you guys. Um, have this time with the Lord, and uh, we uh, we pray um, for your safety um, and for your um, constant uh, mindfulness of Christ and uh, uh, reaching the lost. Um, right? I mean, I can ramble on and on and on, and I'm kind of starting to do that. And so, um, listen, just stay gospel intentional, um, stay connected to the believers, and uh, we'll be joining back for uh, worship and gatherings uh, soon enough. I love you all. We'll see you soon.